this August, we have Gen Con, which is back in person again, so it's time to get back to some tabletop RPG-related reviews. This time we're doing something a little different. Um, I'm taking a look at a couple documentaries about tabletop RPGs, starting off with The Dwarvenaut, a documentary about the Dwarven Forge miniatures terrain that was funded by Kickstarter and for a while back was streaming on Netflix before it got a physical release by a, a Kino Lorber. Many years ago, when I was kind of bouncing in and out between being active and doing tabletop role-playing, we're talking like the 2010s and earlier, um, I started reading Knights of the Deer Table magazine and some issues of Dragon Magazine, when that was still around, uh, when I could. In those issues of the magazine, I encountered ads for Dwarven Forge, a company making miniature dungeon terrain out of really durable material, and what I presume is a plastic, is a variety of resin called Dwarvenite. It was incredibly well sculpted, absolutely beautiful to look at. And as a then high school and then later college student, I also knew that I couldn't begin to hope to afford it. Never, never mind having space for it, being in again college or high school before that. But I really wanted to be in a game that used it. Fast forward to um, several years ago, almost a decade or more ago, um, I got in, finally got in a long-running game again, and much to my delight, my GM owned pretty much all the Dwarvish Forge terrain that had come out to date, and so I was able to play with it and experience using it firsthand, and it was amazing. So then I learned about a documentary on Netflix about the guy who started Dwarven Forge, and I decided I had to check that out. I didn't know what its tone would be. However, at that point, Netflix had not steered me wrong on the documentary front, so what the hell? So The Dwarven Knot is an interesting documentary, both as a character study of Stefan Pocorni, the founder of the company and the sculptor of the terrain that the company puts out, along with a brief snapshot of what draws people to role-playing games. That said, this film tends more strongly towards the former, towards the latter, which is, makes sense considering the title. Stefan talks about what drew him to role-playing games, and we get some interviews with people, often industry luminaries, but what drew them as well. But while... The gen documentary goes to Gen Con and other locations, and we have conversations with people who are use the terrain and who have an interest in the terrain. We don't necessarily get much of an opportunity to talk about newer role players, about why that play, why they play, and in turn, what draws them to Dwarven Forge's terrain. The framing narrative, as much as there is one, is based around the launching of Dwarven Forge's then third Kickstarter for their city terrain set after their earlier dungeon, and cave sets. In particular, they have concerns that due to over-promising on the Kickstarter, if they don't raise $2 million, they will end up going bankrupt. The will they or won't they make the goal part of the documentary kind of works, but the suspense isn't that high because, because of my role-playing game group that I'm in, I already knew from my own experiences that they didn't go out of business, and indeed, they funded that Kickstarter because I'd already played with played in a game that used that terrain. So the tension is ultimately undermined, at least for me. The profile of Stefan is much more engrossing. Getting into not only motivates him as a person who is into role-playing, um, specifically designing a product that would motivate people to play in person instead of online, but also as an artist. There's a scene in the film where Stefan goes, to, goes back to Venice, where he spent some time after he graduated from art school, and he talks about the wear on the stones and the stories these buildings must have seen, and it kind of speaks volumes of the artistic motivations behind the Dwarven Forge terrain from that. Additionally, the film does an amazing job of presenting Dwarven Forge's terrain visually. We get some really well-shot close-ups of the terrain with lighting and dry ice fog that makes it look a miniature from a fantasy movie, and that's not a bad thing. This is a product you can buy, after all. Um, it makes for, an interest, for a strong advertisement for Dwarven Forge's products, which is not quite what I expected from this documentary. It's not necessarily anything new at this point, considering that we've seen similar photography with Dwarven Forge terrain in some of the critical role intros, but still, it's very neat and very nicely done. The Dwarvenaut, ultimately, is a film that showcases the idea of how someone's passion for tabletop gaming can move beyond the story, the desire to tell stories through running a game. Um, and so they can express the desire to create tools for others to create their own stories, no matter what system they use, 
beyond the idea of writing adventures or role-playing game books or that sort of thing in the form of creating the um, Dwarven Forge terrain. I have had the opportunity in the past in a couple previous role-playing game campaigns that was in um, to get in a dwarf, um, again, as I mentioned earlier, to play in a game that was using Dwarven Forge terrain. And I was, I thought it was really neat then. And I like how the presentation of the documentary and how the person who created, who was responsible for this, for um, Stefan, to sort of get a good, see what he's like. To see something, a profile of him, even if this is probably a, a degree, I won't say idealized, but ah, uh, or but it's it's a very favorable portrayal of him. But honestly, I'm quite okay with that. Now, when I originally reviewed this documentary on the blog um, several years ago, the documentary was available for streaming on Netflix. This is again, sadly, no longer the case, and. Presently, it's not on any streaming services, which is a bummer. Documentaries thrive, I have found, on streaming um, in ways that being limited by physical media doesn't necessarily pan out. I mean, the places where I see people go who are, say, I want to watch a documentary, they go to a streaming service for sake of convenience, or they'll check it out from the library because they're looking to be, to, be educated in the court um, in that manner. Fortunately, it has received a physical media release from Kino Lorber, so I want to recommend that you pick that up instead. Their releases are generally very high quality, and even if it's not like super special feature rich necessarily, it's it's a good documentary on its own terms. I definitely recommend picking it up. Indeed, I will have an affiliate link in the show notes. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that. 